Betrayal, Revenge, Spies, and Seduction The Northman is an epic tale, but the legend of Amleth that it's based on is even crazier. Never heard of it? Check out this wild Norse legend right here. Filmmaker Robert Eggers of The Witch and the Lighthouse fame is back at it with a brutal atmospheric take on the Scandinavian legend of Amleth. Eggers collaborated on the script with Schoen, an award-winning Icelandic poet, lyricist, and novelist. The movie embodies menacing, moody horror, enhanced by sweeping views of Iceland's unwelcoming, hostile, and isolated environment. The Northmen has a star-studded cast, including Nicole Kidman, Ethan Hawke, Alexander Skarsgård, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Iceland's iconic pop star and performance artist Björk. Woking up for his turn as a Viking, Skarsgård's impressive girth makes the muscle he gained for Tarzan look downright puny. Besides the incredible cast, Eger's mastery of horror is in fair form as he plums the depths of Viking lore and Scandinavia's harshest climates to create an eerie setting where supernatural elements vie with humans for dominance. But where does the story come from? It all goes back to a boy named Amleth. From the 9th through the 11th centuries, marauding seafarers reshaped Europe and much of the Old World. Pagan warriors hailing from modern-day Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, they lived as independent farmers domestically. But when motivated by overseas treasure, the relative helplessness of their victims, and overpopulation, they became a brutal and far-ranging killing force. Got both ex. Yes, mother. Something to sharpen them with. Yes, mother. Relying on lightweight, shallow longboats, they handily navigate the roughest seas and could sail up rivers, waging warfare well inland. They indulged in hard-hitting, fast-paced coastal attacks where sheer brutality provided shock and awe. As Britannica explains, they mercilessly killed, plundered, and burned everything from isolated monasteries to thriving urban cities, giving no quarter. The legend of Amleth, a Norse folktale recorded in Latin around the 13th century, provides glimpses into this world, per British Library. First recorded in the Dark Ages in the Gesta Danorum, or the Deeds of the Danes, it marked part of a more extensive collection by Saxo Grammaticus, a Danish historian. You'll find Amleth's story in books 3 and 4 per the medievalists. This Scandinavian legend inspired Shakespeare's Hamlet, though how Shakespeare came across the story remains unclear. But Francois de Belleforest published a version in his 16th century work Tragic Histories, which may have provided the source material. Thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Although the Northmen is worlds away from its Elizabethan counterpart Hamlet, it relies on the same basic storyline. And in the same vein, the original story of Amleth unapologetically glorifies Nordic-style vengeance and bloodletting. Sibling rivalries are as old as literature, whether Cain and Abel or the brothers Karamazov. It's a universal theme that extends well beyond the Bible or Russian literature. I just want you to know I hate you. Sibling rivalry launches the action of the legend of Amleth and its creative descendants like Hamlet and the Northmen. Heck, might as well lump the Lion King in there while we're at it. In this case, the vicious betrayal occurs between Arvindil Warraven and his brother Fjolnir. According to Jesta Denorum, Fjolnir's jealousy explodes after Arvindil kills the King of Norway and marries the King of Denmark's daughter. The marriage produces a son and heir, Amleth. Paying no heed to familial ties, Fjolnir viciously slaughters his brother, stealing Arvindil's kingdom and queen in the bargain. In the legend of Amleth, the protagonist avoids his uncle's wrath by feigning madness. As for the Northmen, he escapes his uncle's grasp, consumed by the goal of eventually returning to kill Fjolnir, save his mother, and retake the throne. The murder of his father and marriage of his mother to Fjolnir puts Amleth in a precarious position. In the Northmen, Amleth witnesses his father's cowardly murder at the hands of his uncle. This traumatic event sets the action of the story into motion. It also motivates a protagonist to flee his homeland, commencing the hero's journey that will eventually bring him back for revenge. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you, father. But Saxo Grammaticus's version proves more ambiguous about what Amleth witnessed. On the one hand, there's no mention of Amleth present at King Arvindil's murder. On the other hand, at the end of the summary of Fjolnir's betrayal, Grammaticus writes, Amleth beheld all this, but feared lest too shrewd a behavior might make his uncle suspect him. In other words, Amleth puts on the act of a lifetime, pretending to be a powerless crazy man so that his uncle wouldn't suspect him of wanting vengeance for the whole you killed my father and stole my kingdom thing. Grammaticus describes Amleth as listless and useless, wearing dirty clothes and refusing to bathe. His outward appearance of foolishness contrasts wildly with his inner burn for revenge against his father's murderer and mother's betrayer. The British Library reports Amleth translates as stupid, which further fuels the case that he's no threat to Fjolnir. Yet beneath the surface, there's another tale to tell. Although Amleth acts imbecilic and harmless, he also feels compelled to tell the truth. 
To navigate the fine line between tomfoolery and detection, he speaks in ambiguities that prove unsettling to court members, including his uncle. For example, Grammaticus describes an episode of honesty that should get Amleth killed. The author relates how Amleth spent his days fashioning small weapons over the fire, which he tells people he plans to use to avenge his father. Although his slimy face and filthy clothes cause them to laugh in response, some wonder if he's as crazy as he lets on. As Grammaticus notes, the craftsmanship of the weapon suggests a sharper mind than what Amleth lets on in day-to-day -day conversations. Nevertheless, by acting like a fool, Amleth renders himself even less fit than a murderer for the throne, providing his uncle false assurances. Like the universal theme of sibling rivalry, the legend of Amleth also explores societal taboos that crop up often in literature. Although Sigmund Freud never gave us an analysis of Saxo Grammaticus' original tale, he did delve into the matter regarding William Shakespeare's Hamlet in his essay from 1900 entitled On Repression in Hamlet. The famed psychoanalyst argues that Shakespeare's protagonist wrestles with the same dark impulses as Sophocles' hero and Oedipus Rex. Since Hamlet comes from the ancient cloth of the legend of Hamlet, one might assume the Oedipus complex theory applies to him too. But Saxo Grammaticus makes it clear such is not the case. The original text emphasizes which societal taboos have been broken and who's done the breaking. They include fratricide, which occurred at the hands of Fjolnir when he murdered Arvindil Warraven and sleeping with his sister-in-law. Grammaticus sets Amleth up as the only individual who can right the wrongs that have been committed, restoring balance to the kingdom once more. Despite his best attempts, Amleth's irrepressible honesty eventually incites his uncle's suspicions, according to British Library. To bait Amleth into revealing his true intentions, Fjolnir sends Amleth's nameless foster sister, think an early version of Ophelia, to seduce him per the medievalists. The notion of a beautiful woman who tempts a man to his destruction is one of the oldest in literature. It goes back to the myth of Adam's first wife, Lilith, the goddess Ishtar in the Epic of Gilgamesh, and the sirens that threaten Odysseus's ship in the Odyssey. It's coming from that island. Let's steer heedlessly towards it. But we're in for a twist when it comes to the legend of Amleth. Grammaticus tells us they've known each other since early childhood, and the alleged seductress of Amleth acts as his protector. Why would Fjolnir choose someone so close to Amleth to seduce him? It's all in Fjolnir's attitude toward his nephew. He takes very little notice of Amleth while completely underestimating him. One of the most significant differences between the legend of Amleth and Shakespeare's Hamlet is the role of women. For example, the legend of Amleth's proto-Ophelia and femme fatale character remains nameless, despite the fact she plays an integral role in saving Amleth from Fjolnir's trap. Even the queen has men in her life make decisions for her and speak on her behalf. Fjolnir even uses her as a scapegoat for his crimes. In the story, the queen also seems ill-equipped to protect her vulnerable son when he needs it most. Even though she's the daughter of a king and one of the few individuals in the story with actual royal blood, she lacks self-determination. Fortunately, the Northmen makes big changes in that regard. Still suspecting Amleth, Fjolnir sends a spy to eavesdrop on the young man while he speaks with his mother, according to British Library. In Shakespeare's play, this marks one of the most famous scenes as Hamlet denounces his mother, Queen Gertrude, for her crimes. Gertrude has plenty to say in her defense, making for a dramatic climax that leads to her crying out in fear, revealing the spy behind the curtain. But in Saxo Grammaticus' text, we only get Amleth's dialogue as he castigates his mother. Grammaticus notes simply that Amleth's words corrected his mother's behavior, returning her to the path of virtue. The lack of dialogue leaves plenty of room for interpretation as to her true motives. The legend of Amleth also featured a spy. Unlike Shakespeare's Man Behind the Tapestry, the spy has staked out a dark corner of the Queen's room beneath a pile of straw, as reported by Internet Shakespeare. Realizing the spy knows he's plotting to kill his uncle, Amleth acts quickly and decisively. In a rage, he kills the spy, chops him up, cooks the body, and throws the pieces into the sewer, where the pigs take care of the rest. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Basically, Amleth won't let anything get in the way of his revenge. Fjolnir finds himself stuck between a rock and a hard spot at this point in the story, per the legend of Amleth. Although highly suspicious of his nephew, he can't act, so he chooses cowardly cunning to take out his rival. He has two escorts accompany Amleth to England, with a letter ordering his execution upon arrival per British Library. But Amleth outsmarts his wily uncle, rewriting portions of the letter to have his escorts killed. Then, he marries the daughter of the English king, further securing his noble claims. Grammaticus uses this motif to emphasize the superior traits of Amleth, pointing to his rightful place on the throne. 
Revenge pervades the legend of Hamlet, and it remains one of the master plots of classic literature. But unlike Shakespeare's Hamlet, where the playwright spends time ruminating over the devastating impacts of revenge seeking on the main characters, Hamlet is shown as victorious and justified. End of story. The medievalists assert that revenge seeking remained a vital aspect of maintaining honor in Dark Ages Northern Europe, and Hamlet is ultimately a Viking hero. Vikings saw revenge and violence as unquestioned necessities, so you don't find Amleth wandering through cemeteries embroiled in deep soliloquies. He's part of a culture with structured means for dealing with transgressions, which makes self-reflection on the negative impacts of revenge-seeking unthinkable. You killed my father. Big mistake. After killing his uncle and his courtiers, Saxo Grammaticus sings Amleth's immortal praises. The author notes, by skillful defense of himself and strenuous revenge for his parent, he has left it doubtful whether we are to think more of his wit or his bravery. The celebration of Amleth's violent overthrow of Fjolnir leaves many narrative threads untied, including what happens to his mother. But in the story, none of that matters, because he restored the Viking societal order through violence. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite movies are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!